to just come in with one one song we cut that's right we cut it now oh okay that's fine okay so the rest are okay Trust in you. You keep us in perfect peace. Our minds are stayed on you because we trust in you.
<coughs> Testing one, two. Hey, good morning, good morning, good morning. You can lock that door in case a mystery person walks in. morning. Hey, welcome. Welcome you this morning. We want to welcome you this morning in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I know that all of us are at home, worshiping from home, or wherever you are in the world, we welcome you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to give a shout out to our Sunday school. They've been up early this morning and doing their Sunday school before the service. So Sunday school children, turn to your mommy and daddy, say that I deserve a beautiful gift this Christmas for getting up early this morning. I know that the youth were still sleeping in and all the adults were just getting up half an hour ago, but you have been up doing Sunday school. So thank you, Sunday school teachers. Thank you, uh, children's ministry, for continuing the ministry uh, and to minister to our children on Zoom. But welcome this morning. We're looking at Psalms 27. And it's going to be exciting. How do we continue to trust the Lord no matter what goes on in our circumstances? And I trust that the word of the Lord will speak to you and that the spirit of God will minister to you through the worship and through the scripture and through the preaching of the scripture. Psalms 27 verse 1, it says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life, whom should I dread? We come and worship a God that loves, but we also worship a God that protects. Let's, you know, I want to be able to say for you to stand at home, but if you feel uncomfortable, that's okay. You can also sit. But if, if you feel comfortable, let's stand together and worship in the comfort of your home and for us that are here. Let me pray for us and then hand you over to Hanson and the team. Let's pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are our Lord, our light, our salvation. We praise you for your love and your goodness and your protection. We praise you for your presence, for walking with us on a day-to-day -day basis, on a week-to-week -week basis, on a monthly and annual basis. We thank you for your presence. And as we come to worship you this morning, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would pour your spirit onto our hearts and onto our mind so that we can be drawn in to your presence, into the holy of holies, and being able to be transformed by your love this morning. We worship you, almighty God, now with our singing. Amen. Let's worship the Lord together. <laughs> Lord, I come, oh, I come. 
sand and a peace that endureth thy own dear presence to cheer and to guide strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow blessings of
pray. Let's pray together. I want to ask you, I know you're at home. I want to ask you to just to commit this moment to hearing God, to commit this moment to receiving from Him, to dedicate this time to have God encounter you this morning. So as we pray, I pray that you will close your eyes and really focused on God's presence this morning. Let's do that. Let's pray. Father, this morning we come to you and we want to examine our souls before you. We want to lay our hearts and our minds and our lives before your holy presence. And as we just sang that hymn, we desire your peace to come down like a river into our soul. But we also pray that my sin, as we've sang, that my sins will also be nailed to your cross so that my soul can be well this morning. Father, as we lay ourselves bare before you, may your Holy Spirit bring the river of joy, the river of forgiveness, the river of mercy, the river of healing, the river of love, the river of the embrace of the Father's love, the river of words of encouragement and words of being built up in you. We pray that your spirit come now to every heart this morning, from our children to our youth and young adult and adult to our seniors, that your spirit will come this morning and extend the river that is in your presence right into our hearts this morning so that we can sing with conviction that it is well with my soul. It is wild with my heart this morning. It is wild with my mind this morning. It is wild because Jesus had taken my sins and nailed it to the cross. And because of his death on the cross, the Father can turn to me and say, I forgive you. I release my grace upon you. My mercy is made available to you now. And so Father, I pray that your spirit will come not only to convict but your spirit will come and draw us to the loving and embracing present righteous and holy of the Father. We also sang this morning that the holiness of Jesus the holiness of the Father is Jesus himself in me. And I pray that it will not be knowledge, but it will be Jesus. That it will not be Christianity, but it will be Jesus. That it will not be songs and pastors and others, but it will be Jesus, my righteousness, my holiness. We pray this morning, Father, for our city and for the world. And Father, we pray for one thing, because one thing will bring healing to us now and forevermore, and that's your gospel. We pray that your gospel will be administered in all facets, in all spheres of our city. We pray for the empowerment of your spirits on every individual, on every son and daughter of you that are in every spheres today that will speak and shine forth your light into those areas. We pray for your protection and we thank you and we worship you for your protection over all of us and we pray for your strength and we pray for the overcoming desire so that we can overcome all of this but we also pray for re a remedy that we can have a medicine that can cope but Father we want to look beyond the medicine and look to you and to you alone. Father, we pray this morning that as we hear your word be administered and be read, that your spirit will take your word and make it grow in our lives this morning so that it can bear the fruit you so desire. 
We pray for your blessing on our families. We pray for your grace and love to be with us now. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of his wonderful spirit. And we all say in our homes, amen. Let's have the reading of the word of God now for us. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I fear? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. I know you're at home, and I know you know one another very well. But you know that sometimes we don't actually welcome our loved ones within the, the temple of God. So I, wanna, I want you to turn to the person next to you and welcome and say, May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be upon you. Do that at home now. And we do welcome the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ to be upon all of us, even into your lovely and comfortable homes uh, this morning. Uh, we do miss you, um, no doubt. It is very different to worship with empty chairs. There's no energy coming from the chairs. Um, but when you are here, there's the energy that we, uh, we help and encourage one another in worshiping together. So at home, uh, we foresee that this may go on longer than uh, we want. I want you to create an atmosphere of worship at home. That means clean your living room the night before and um, place certain beautiful flowers in your living room. Create an atmosphere because you're inviting God. I, I, we know that God's present at your home, but in this special moment, you're inviting him uh, to worship with you in your home. His spirit is with you. So I want to encourage you um, coming uh, Saturday night uh, before you go to bed, you know, put things uh, aside. Uh, w husband, don't make the wives do this. Children, don't let the, your mother do this. All of us can contribute in cleaning up your place and putting nice flowers. And if you want a nice photo, you can take a photo of me to leave in the front of your, um, your place or so make it look beautiful. And, and holy and so forth. Just kidding. Uh, but we welcome you. T today we're looking at the Psalms. We're looking at the Summer of Psalms. One of my favorite sermon series. Because there's a lot of hope. There's a lot of joy. There's a lot of love. There's a lot of forgiveness in the Psalms. And as we begin with Psalms 27, uh, we will go for a couple of months looking at the Psalms uh, together. <clears throat> and I want to encourage you to to read this psalm, Psalms 27, we've only read the first four uh, verses, but I'm covering the whole psalms all the way down to verse 11 there. So I encourage you to, uh, to make the psalm your prayer uh, this week, where you can pray out these verses, where you can pray out these cries that David has penned down for us to look at. Today we're looking at trusting the Lord no matter what. Now I'm going to go through <clears throat> the whole sermon today. 
And you're going to wonder, when did I talk about trust? Why didn't I talk about trust? I'm going to talk about something else and then bring it in and conclude it down to the end. And it's going to be about trust. So just bear with me as some of us who are, you know, the logical ones that like to go from A, B, and C. Just bear with me. I will come back and draw that conclusion. For the rest of us, well, we, we're all kind of, we love colors and, and, and that sort of thing. So it's all right. But what does it mean to trust the Lord when everything else is falling apart around you? We're not just talking about the environment. We're talking about psychologically. We're talking about our minds. We're talking about our hearts. We're talking about our spirits. Because we can have a beautiful environment, but inside can be completely messed up and are falling apart. And we try to do a good job in covering up. But David is saying, <clears throat> what happens? How do I keep trusting God when not only external but internal things going on that is tearing me apart. I don't have to talk about this year. This year has been one of those years. In fact, none of us have had one of these years. This is all new to all of us. Things are falling apart, not just here, but all over the world. That's understandable. But what about internal as well? But the question is, what do we do? How do we continue to trust the Lord when things are falling apart around us? I want to talk about three main things. And this is regarding uh, Psalms 27. Why is it important? I'll explain as we go along. What is it and how do we do it? Why, what, and how? Let's go to the why this morning. First, why is it important for David to seek after one thing. One thing. To seek after one thing. You know, David, as I mentioned, was facing some scary moments in his life. Externally, you can see that in the scriptures, in verses 2, that was beautifully read out by Catherine, that, the, that David said, look, the, there was an army. My enemies are surrounding me. They're, they're, I can hear them. I can, I can smell them. I, I can hear their voices. I can hear their threats. I can, I, I, it, basically, I can see them. And they were about ready to come in and to attack. David said, that's one group, external enemies. And then there was another group, internal enemy, in verse 10, where David says, my father and my mother, even they have forsaken me. You know, the most important relationship in your life, David was saying, in David's life, the most secure, the relationship where he gets to learn about authority, to learn about love, to learn about how to respect others, that authority in itself is re forsaking me. And there's some internal issues that are going on with David. And so David said, my enemy is right near, but internal I've been forsaken. I don't know if any one of us, and I pray that none of us have ever been forsaken in this way. But this has been real to David. Real to David. But David says, if I only, ha if I only have this one thing, I will be okay externally and internally. One thing. Verse 6, it says, even if my enemy surrounds me, David's talking about even if he's in the tent, out in the middle of the field where the battle takes place, and he says, even if I'm in the tent and my enemy is surrounding me, he said, if I have this one thing, I will be okay. Tent means that it's easily broken in, it can be burned. He's not talking about being behind the walls or in the city that is protected. He's talking about the enemies that are really, really at his gates, at his doors. But he says, even if my enemy can come in at any time and take my life, if I have this one thing, one thing, I would be okay externally and internally. Now, you might be asking, 
what, what in the world is he talking about? What is that one thing? Why not tell me this one thing? I'll tell you this one thing, but not yet. I'll tell you where you shouldn't go looking for this one thing, though. This one thing is not found in you. You can try searching in your own life. You will never find it. This one thing is not found in others close to us. Let's say a spiritual mentor or a spiritual mother or father or, or, or somebody spiritual or the deacons or your life group leaders or somebody who's been a Christian a long time and God forsake uh, that you're trying to look at in your pastor. You will not find it in them. You will never find it in any other Christian around. You will never find it within Christian methods. No matter how many methods that you and I can develop, you will not find it there. You will not find it in power and prestige. You will not find it in your education. You will not find it in that beautiful job that makes you look wonderful uh, and provides for you in an incredible way. You will not find it. You will not find it in your spouse. You will not find it in our city. You will not, in fact, find it here on earth. One thing, the one thing that despite the enemies surrounding me, attacking, ready to kill, and even internally, I've been forsaken by my parents. David said, I have this one thing, I would be okay. But it cannot be found elsewhere. Well, what is that one thing? What is the one thing? And we go to point number two now. Psalms 27 verse 1, uh, verse 4. One thing I ask from the Lord. That word one is an incredibly important word in the Hebrew theology. And there is such thing. It's called the Hebrew theology. The Hebrew theology of prayer and worship. In the, in the times of Moses, in fact, all the way down to our Lord Jesus Christ and all the way into our times today, the Hebrews are still praying this prayer. Uh, sh the, they call it the Shema prayer. And Shema is the word that you hear. And they say, Shema Israel. I mean, hear, O Israel. Adonai, Ado Hindu, Adonai Eka. Which means, hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God and the Lord is one. That connection, that foundation, that understanding that the Lord is one. That word one is very important. And it says here, one thing I ask, meaning that there is nothing else beyond that. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all days of my life to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. That's the one thing. We'll break it down, though. That's the one thing. Notice that even when David has his enemy surrounding him, even when his internally his world has been turned upside down, notice that he doesn't go to the presence of the Lord and begs God to do something. Because if this was me, I would be begging God to take the enemies away. I would be begging God to heal the internal uh, chaos that is going on in my heart. I was begging God to do this, to do that, to provide this, to provide that. But David said, that's not the one thing that I'm after. Have you ever noticed, and you should, I encourage you, you should do this. Try it. When you pray, press the recording part on your phone and just let your prayers be recorded. And after you pray, you come back after you're done with your prayer and you listen to it. And you want to find the emphasis. You know that today, majority of us spend more time praying for our needs. And that's number one. Number two, we pray for the protection. But we rarely spend less. We, in fact, we spend less than two minutes praising and thanking. Who are we going? Where are we going? What is it that we want in the presence of God? And David has said, I don't want anything else but God himself. 
if I can only be with God, if I can only be at the presence of God, if I can only sense God in my life, that's all I need right now. I don't need anything else. You know, it's, it's, it's like you have a back problem, and let's say you text Dr. Ling, Dr. Alex Ling, you text him and you tell him, hey, I have a back problem. Dr. Ling say, hey, uh, why don't you come in either Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, and we'll sort it out. And you never, you never go. The next week, you text Dr. Ling, I have a problem. I have a back problem. And, and Dr. Ling say, hey, why don't you come on Tuesday? I'm free on Tuesday. And you never go. Next time you text, Dr. Ling, I have a back problem. This is what Dr. Ling can do. Not respond to you. Sometimes that's what our prayer looks like. We call out to God from the outside. And we're outside of the temple. But we never actually go in and be with him. And David is trying to teach us, if you can only be with God, external enemies, internal enemies, he'll sort it out. But sometimes we call out, we come to the gate and say, God, I have this problem, I have that problem, and then walk away and leave. We just sang today, righteousness is Jesus himself in me. It's not a concept, not a theory, it's a person. And David said, if I have that one thing, it doesn't matter what's happening around me. It doesn't matter what's going on internally. I am with the one who can and will protect and provide and guide and heal and do all the other things that my heart originally wants. Don't be texting, don't be calling, and then not be with the present. Sometimes when you listen to your prayer, it's calling God outside, not actually being in God, being with God. How do you do that? Well, spend five minutes, 15 minutes if you like, just praising God. You know when you're praising God, you're not calling from the outside. You know when you praise somebody, hard to praise people by texting them, but incredibly honoring when you're in the presence of them. When you're praising God. So if now record a different kind of prayer. Just spend five minutes pressing and praising and posing about God. This is who you are, God. This is what you've done. This is, wow, you're amazing at this. Look at what this, look at, look at your presence here. Look at your healing. And you begin to praise him. And you all of a sudden feel like David, I've gained this one thing, being inside. But specifically, what do we do when we are inside the presence of God? David said, gazing at the beauty of God. You know, beauty is a... Uh, really distorted, uh, a distorted concept today. Uh, and I, New York University uh, did a whole study of how uh, our concept and understanding of beauty has changed over the years. And two uh, things that they found is that beauty was reinterpreted to, to, to see it more on the physical outward appearance versus the internal characteristic of individuals, of people. And, and they say that this has had a dire uh, implication of how we understand beauty. They said that now the elites and the elites in, in the movie industries, in the singing industry, in the modeling industry, now have locked up the, the, the narrative of what beauty looks like in the world. And then they sell it back to us in, 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 in bulk in terms of finance. And they said the, the moment we redefine beauty is now locked up by the elites and now being sold back to us and now we are struggling with the understanding of beauty. And we see now that, you know, the majority of the way beauty is in terms of uh, the way women look at their own physical appearance and they don't look at in the character and, and, and everything else, but they look at the physical appearance and begin to develop their self-worth and self-identity. But also another impact, they say that men now look at women only from the physical appearance. And you know, the industry of adult science has 
skyrocket when these uh, researchers had done this research uh, during that time, ma making it legal online. Did you know that 30 million users view adult sites every second? 30 million people. Why are they going on these adult sites? Beauty. They think they can find beauty in there. It's very scary. But there is a Harvard uh, professor who come out, a wonderful professor, a woman by the name of Elaine Scarry. And uh, Professor Scarry has written a, a book called um, On Beauty and Being Just. A wonderful, wonderful book. And she said this, trying to redefine the concept of beauty in the modern world, is that we can't do or live without the concept of beauty. It needs to be invited back, but it needs to be invited back with trust, uh, with trust. And he quotes the professor, the late professor Immanuel Kant, and he, she writes, and um, Immanuel Kant says this, our capacity for beauty or our hunger for beauty is infinitely bottomless. He says the moment we awake, the moment we go to sleep, our soul desires and longs after beauty. You, you, Immanuel Kant said, you can get tired of eating. You can get tired of other people and other things. But your soul was created never to get tired of beauty. Never to get tired of beauty. Dr. Skari, in her little book, uh, writes three things. She says three things about beauty. First of all, beauty creates community through the joys of praise. Beauty creates community through the joys of praise. You know, when you see something beautiful, what is it that you like to do? You want to share it with others. The joy comes into your life, and then you share it with others. Somebody this week, I think it was Hanson, uh, who showed me a video of the skies of Hong Kong last week. And I could not believe it. The colors, this was sunset where the sun was setting. The colors were changing from pink to light oranges. I'm not very good with colors. First of all, I'm colorblind, I think. And it's red, and then it turns to blue. I keep asking myself, that can't be Hong Kong. But what was Hanson doing? Creating community. The joy that he was receiving, he's now sharing it with me, and now I'm sharing it with you. Hong Kong is a beautiful, beautiful place. But why share it? Beauty produces a joy that is only complete when you share it with others. You notice that? When you find something beautiful, it can only be joyful when you actually share it with others. This is why you can go to a concert with total stranger and there's an incredible, whatever it is, song or play, and you come out and you feel like you know that stranger that was sitting next to you. Joy and beauty has been shared. A community has been developed. Number two, Dr. Scassi said this second, beauty infuses hope through the conviction of meaning. When you are in the presence of something beautiful, no matter how you felt before that moment, beauty would infuse your heart with hope. When you're sitting before an amazing artwork, painting, or for us men, when you're sitting before your spouse, beauty infuses you that you forget about everything else and that hope begins to give birth to come in to us like a river. That wonderful, wonderful um, song created by Handel. It's called Handel's Messiah. If you haven't listened to, uh, to it, please go and listen to it. Um, it, it this, was, uh, this was created for King George II for his inauguration. And when King George heard it for the first time, and he was surrounded by this incredible music, and he heard the words, and he heard the words being sung out, hallelujah. In fact, it was sung out 70 times in that one, li one little song. And the word Messiahs, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, gets what happened. King George was captivated by beauty. He stood up, and as he stood up, all other people stood up as well in the crowd. Around. Even the orchestra, I feel sorry for the guys who are trying to play the cello. They all stood up as well and they were captivated by hope because of the beauty of that hymn that was sung at that time. The, the Handel's 
uh, Messiah. And even every single king or queen of England, that Messiah is being played for their inauguration. It creates hope in us. Beauty creates hopes. Beauty, number three, beauty undermines your selfishness. If you've ever been captivated by beauty, you begin to think less about yourself and more about what's out there. What else is out there that's beautiful? And when you're captivated by beauty, you begin to stop looking at yourself. You begin to shut your ego out and you begin to admire outside and others. Beauty captivates and brings us into shutting our selfishness out. This is why parents can go sleepless when they're the, the unborn child. This is why they, they, they have one hour or less than one hour sleep. And when they hold on to that child, something goes missing. Their selfishness has gone out of the window. The way they love that child. And we're feeling sorry for the parent because they're not sleeping, but they don't care. Beauty of that child that has been given to them causes their selfishness to go, causes their ego to leave. And beauty does that to us. No wonder David says, I will love to be in the house of the Lord, gazing at the beauty of the Almighty God because of what it does. This is, for me, I have this on my computer every morning. It's what is beautiful to me. This is, I think it was taken by Val and the boys. I stayed home because they went for a hike. Um, they, they were in Austria. And um, the most, I can't tell you how incredibly beautiful this area is. And uh, when they took this photo, I, I'm just, every time I see the photo, I feel like I'm in Austria right now experiencing the sun and the smell and the surrounding of Austria. This is Val's family uh, living there in Austria. And this is what I find beauty. I want to encourage you. Find something that is beautiful. The Handel's Messiah, all the hymns that was written by Handel, that's what I consider beauty and I listen to it. And this photo here for me is one of the most beautiful, beautiful moments of our vacation. So look at things that are beautiful and you will be changed. Well, number three, as I bring us to an end, how do we do beauty? How do we gaze in the beauty of God like David here? Number one, there are four, and let me just list out. I'm sure there are many, but let me just list out four. Number one, you first need to experience a spirit-filled and a spirit-led experience. You need to have a spirit-filled and a spirit-led experience because that's what is going to draw and keep you in the presence of God. Psalms 27 verse 8, David sends the voice of God through the breeze of his spirit. David seeks his face. This is literal sensory ex uh, in terms of expression that David is putting out that only the spirit can do into our hearts, that we can sense and hear the voice of God as we're dwelling in his beauty. You need to be filled with the presence of the spirit. Number two, intentionality. Right? You need to do what David is doing. He was very intentional in the way that he sought after beauty. And, and, and this has to do with you being schedule, scheduling in times that you have with the Lord, uh, th that you can seek his beauty. I can't tell you, I've told you so many times that the most beautiful moment in my life is early in the morning, sitting alone on the couch, putting the headphone with a strong espresso of coffee and listening to the word of God. That for me is the most beautiful. And my only response to the word of God, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, for your word. Father, that word is really touching my heart this morning. Well, glory, God, for your works. I'm listening to Jeremiah right now, trying to encourage the body of Christ. The most beautiful the most beautiful moment in my life is hearing the voice and the word 
of God through His Word. And I ask you to be disciplined in that. Be disciplined in setting out time. Be disciplined in prioritizing that time so that you can experience not necessarily knowledge, but the actual presence, the actual beauty of God. So be disciplined in praising God uh, as you listen to His Word and also gazing on the beauty of who God is. Let me go down to point number three here. Point number three is allowing the truth of God to be translated into my life. Notice what David is doing in this psalm. He didn't go to a Bible study. Didn't try to study God. He says, I want to be with God. I want to be with God. Translating truth. He says, if I can only get to God, the fact that He is a light, the fact that He's my protection would be a reality in my life. David says, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. In verse, uh, verse 4, the word seek there is, 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 to, is to plow until you break through. This is not just a five minute. This is not just a 15 minute. This is not just 30 minutes. It's you're plowing through the truth of God so that you can not get to the truth, although that's important, but so that you can get to God. See, often we want the truth, and often we limit ourselves only to the truth of the Word of God, and that is important. But we sometimes, it's like this, we go to Dr. Lee, and Dr. Lee said, this is what you need, this is what you need, here's what, here's what you need, and you say thank you, and you walk away without him examining you and telling you. You're just hearing what Dr. Lee is saying, thinking that's all you need, but Dr. Lee said, wow, just have to wait. I need to see you and observe you and do that. It's like that. You're not just going to God for some truth. You're going to God because of God himself. And when you seek, that's how you seek. You're seeking him, not biblical truth, not biblical laws, not anything else, but him. David said one thing, and that one thing is him. Not what we can get from God. Not the crumbs that God can give us, but Him. Him would be the one thing that you're looking at. You see, David says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? This is the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Well, what does David mean by light? Now we're plowing. What does he mean? It can mean wisdom. It can mean insight. It can mean righteousness, but what does David actually mean? He means, light means path to him. The Lord is my path. He's creating a path for me to walk. What does salvation mean? We think of rescue and we think of righteousness. But for David, he doesn't mean any of that. He means the presence of God in his life. When, when the Lord is my light the path of God, and my salvation, the present and the person of God. Whom shall I fear? Because I have God, not truth, but God himself on and in and beside me. That's why there is a stronghold because of God. Not because of concepts, not because of truth, or those are important, but because of God himself. The light is the path, the salvation is the presence. Of God, therefore, I shall now fear because He is with me. Therefore, He's my stronghold, and I will not be afraid because He Himself is my life. Plowing through, plowing through to get to the Word of God. Number four is to center Christ into your life. Everything needs to be centered in Christ. You know, David actually didn't, wasn't able to sit in the presence of God like you can right now and gaze on the beauty. He didn't get there. Not yet. Verse 9, it says, do not hide your face. Something went on from me. All of a sudden, God is hiding his face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. What is going on in verse 9? What David is saying 
that Moses is saying, to, uh, sorry, David, God is saying to David, just like what he said to Moses, you can't see my face and live. But you can. You realize that you can gaze on the beauty of God and live. You can see the face of God and live. That's because of what the Spirit of God and what our Lord Jesus of God have done on, our, on the cross and the outpouring of His Spirit. Jesus. Jesus is the answer and we center, center our lives around Him. Remember the title of this sermon? Trusting the Lord no matter what. But where does trust come into this? How do we trust? You can only trust God when you have shared beauty in his temple. Trust is not a concept. It's an experience and it's the relationship. Trust doesn't come to you with method. It comes to you with a person. Trust is a matter of intimacy. If you're not intimate with God, you cannot trust. Us married couples know this. You can be married to somebody 15, 100 years if you like. But you, if you haven't shared beautiful moments of intimacy, you will never develop trust. You will never be able to say, I truly trust my spouse. This is why David is saying, if I want to develop trust and everything else in my life, I need that one thing. That one thing is to gaze on the beauty of the Almighty God. Trust is a matter of relationship and is a matter of intimacy. If you haven't been building intimacy and beautiful moment with God, there's no way you will be able to trust Him. There's no way that you would be able to trust Him no matter what happens. Fear will overtake. Being afraid will overtake. There will be no stronghold. Why? Because God will not force himself to you to experience him. You and I have to be there. You can only trust when you share beautiful moment with God through reading his word, through praying with your body, or with the body, and through gathering uh, together in terms of worship. How do you trust the Lord? Gaze. That's how you trust. Gaze on the beauty of of the Lord. It's no good just going to the temple. It's no good just praying out loud and then leave. This only works when you are in and gazing at the beauty of God. Let me ask our worship team to come and help us to do this as we respond to Him. And there will be questions that you might be asking How do I do this? Very simply. Just go to him. You have an opportunity to do that right now as you bow your hair, uh, your head, or and your hair uh, in prayer as the worship team comes and lead us in a very personal, very intimate song. Um, and I will let them tell us, uh, tell that to us this morning, and then we will pray together at the end. Yeah, so this song is, um, it's come from Isaiah 26, the, the whole chapter, um, which really goes with what Pastor Will has been saying. Um, it, the, the chorus of the song comes from verse 3, and it says, You keep us in perfect peace when our minds are stayed on you because we trust in you. And this is a verse that has really stuck with me for a long time and has come out of that personal experience like Pastor Will is saying um, I, yeah, I spent some time in, in a, lots of hard situations, and this verse always comes back, because like you're saying, when we have that one uh, desire, that, that, that presence of the Lord, our minds are stayed on Him, that they're continuously, our, my mind is, is meditating, is thinking, is, is, um, is in His presence, that's where, that's where perfect peace is, and that's where trust is born, and um, this song was born out of that place of, of intimacy with the Lord. And, um, and so, yeah, I hope you can sing along as, as you learn it.
Let's pray. Just encourage you at home right now to bow your head in prayer. I know that there are some of us who are longing to experience the presence of God like David. That you are going through external and internal issues. And you just want to be with God. I want to give you this moment now. I want to invite you to be able to gaze on the beauty of God. And we're trusting that the Spirit of God will reveal Himself to you in a way that you have never experienced before. And for those that are listening and wondering, 
I can't experience God because I don't have a relationship with Him. Or because of sin or because of my brokenness. I want to be able to give you an opportunity to go to the presence of God and you would receive from Him forgiveness. So we're going right now to the presence of God. So I encourage you to sit at home to bow your head and we're going to plow through we're going to seek not for wisdom not for knowledge but for God himself through his spirit that we can actually experience him now and not die because of the work of our Lord Jesus Christ let's go to him now I'm going to pray and if you want to echo my prayer that's wonderful Lord, we come to you in your temple to seek your face because there's only one thing that we long after, one thing that we desire, nothing else. And that is you and you alone. I know I have issues, Lord. I know I have uh, external and internal issues. But, you know, I want to leave that aside. I just want to see you. I want to gaze upon your beauty this morning. I want to be transformed by your beauty, by your presence this morning. And we ask you in Jesus' name, as a father, that you will come and do that right now to us. Holy Spirit, the representation of the Father and of the Son, come to our homes now, come into our minds, and reveal your beauty to the hearts and minds of our children and our youth and our young adults and our seniors and everyone that is listening to this broadcast. We pray in Jesus' name that you come now. Come now, Holy Spirit. Come now, Spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ. We want to see your beauty. We want to experience your love. We want to experience you right now. Come. Come reveal yourself to us. Come Holy Spirit. 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 We want to gaze upon your beauty. Revealed yourself like you've never revealed before. We want to gaze on your beauty this morning. We don't want healing. We don't, we don't want you to provide. We don't want you to do all the other things. We just want you this morning. Holy Father, we just want to see you. We want to gaze. We want to gaze into your beauty. We don't want prescription to our needs. We don't want our needs to be met right now. We just want you, our light and our salvation. Come, Holy Spirit, reveal, reveal yourself to us. The beauty, the beauty and the magnificent beauty of the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. in perfect peace Come on, our spirit. minds are stayed on you because we trust in you oh, pour your spirit upon us yes Lord. you keep us in 
perfect peace. Our minds are stayed on you because we trust in you. Our souls yearn for your name. Our souls yearn for There's some of us who might be saying that, oh, you just don't know what I'm going through right now. And we want to honor and respect that. I know some of you are facing very difficult, both external and internal issue at this time. And you're saying, I just can't open myself up. It's okay. It's okay. But I want to encourage you to trust Him. If not today, tomorrow or when you're ready to go to him for him to go to the father for the father to go to Jesus for Jesus to go to the father for his presence not because of what you need not because of something in your heart that needs to be fixed go to him for him and he would be your light and he would be your salvation. Father, we will trust you no matter what's going on because of you. Because of you, Jesus. Because of you. And we thank you that we can come to you and to you alone and you will be the light. You will be the path. You will be the one that actually come to rescue you sent your son, you sent your spirit, you sent yourself to be with us so that we can be rescued and so that we can be brought in to your presence and your temple and so that we can be transformed by the beauty of your love, by the beauty of your presence, by the beauty of your mercy, by the beauty of your forgiveness, by the beauty of us being cleansed before your, before your throne. The beauty of your throne, the beauty of your authority, the beauty of your love for all. And we thank you as we gaze to you that we are transformed right at that moment. Who is my enemy that I should be afraid of when God is with me? What are eternal issues that can sometimes tear me apart? I have confidence in this because of God and God alone, I can go through anything. Hallelujah. We give glory to you. We give thanks to you. We thank you. You keep us in perfect peace. Now and forevermore we pray. Amen. 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 Now just because you're worshiping at home, I uh, don't think we're going to be not collecting our offering uh, and our tithes. That's all part of our worship this morning. And so you know the drill. Uh, there will information online, and when you're ready, you can forward that to the office as well. But no pressure. You're giving out of your love and desire for the Lord. Let me pray for us, and then we'll give time for you to do our offering. Father, we thank you that you have given us everything and that you give us an opportunity to respond to that. And right now, as we give our tithes and offering, we pray for your glory, we pray for your honor, we pray for your presence to be with us as a response. Give thanks to you now in Jesus' name. Amen.
welcome. We're almost there. Um, let me go through announcements for those who are a close part of our family here in IPC, just for direction. Uh, you know the drill about our life groups, uh, from our youth all the way up uh, into our seniors. Uh, their life group information, we thank the deacons for sending that information out to you. If you are not sure, text Romel uh, or Carlos, and we'll be able to direct you into uh, each of those life groups. So participate and uh, be involved in the community, but also want to encourage you to, to be able to encourage one another. This is a time of encouragement. Don't try to fix one another. Don't try to fix others' theology and philosophy and way of life. It's time to encourage, time to build up, not to tear down. So as you go within your groups this afternoon, be able to think about that. Anything that would praise Jesus' name, say it. Anything that is not, well, keep it in your pocket uh, until he does so. Uh, the other announcement that we have is the, the business meeting next week. Uh, now, there will be no life groups next week on Zoom because of our business meeting. We'll have it after church, and it will be on Zoom, live on Zoom. And we want to encourage everybody to participate. The uh, office will send out uh, the uh, connection in terms of getting on Zoom. And we want to encourage you not to send that out to the public, just for members and for part of those involved in the body, uh, associate members as well, and anybody attending IBC um, are free to contribute. Uh, we will do the live screaming of Zoom from the, from the church office. Uh, again, we want to make sure to let you know that we're keeping and we're doing everything and following everything that uh, the government has laid down for us, like four people. And we're only choosing four beautiful people uh, to be aired out for your sake because we're coming on your screen. And so if you're not chosen, don't, don't feel hard. Don't feel sad. Uh, the prayer vigil uh, is there for you. It's all online, a 24-hour prayer vigil. Hey, encourage you to pray. Another wonderful way to be able to seek the beauty of God, and that is to pray for others, uh, to be able to pray for the body, to pray for the work of God through our body here. Now, the lastly is the IPC Alpha uh, that we're looking at in terms of August. Now, we'll make some announcement um, to come up later. We will go through Alpha, whether we're going to do it here live or physically, um, but we know the circumstances. We need to be flexible. I don't have my toes stood here to stretch my leg like I did last week, but you know what I mean. Uh, we will do Alpha, but it may be on Zoom or it may be uh, here given the, um, uh, when it's safe for us to do that physically, which means that we won't be able to have time to physically meet your guests, but they will be able to hear uh, the, the, the sermon by uh, Reverend um, Nikki Combo, and then we'll also be able to break people up into small groups with our uh, members of the church leading those groups on Zoom. So, hey, we, we got to be flexible, but one thing that we cannot stop doing, and that is worship and ministry. We got to keep doing those given the, the, the opportunities and the methods that we have to be able to do that. And that's all the announcement for today. Again, our life groups are on after this. If you don't have one, um, uh, if you don't know the, uh, the Zoom contact, please get hold of Carlos and Romel. If you text me, uh, you will be lost. But if you text Romel and Carlos, they will guide you in uh, with the right information. Let me pray for us now to end as the worship team continue to sing. That wonderful song. Did you, did you know that Hannah wrote that wonderful song there? Uh, perfect, uh, perfect Peace. That was when he, when she, before she met Leo. And now she's keeping singing this particular song, Perfect Peace, uh, with Knesset on the way too. So let me pray and then they will continue to worship. And if, if it's on live, continue to worship with them. Let's pray. Father, we give thanks to you for your word. We give thanks to you for one another. We give thanks to you for your presence. Come and be present among us. Help us to prioritize our time so that we can be gazing, so that we can be in the presence of the Almighty God, seeking God Himself, seeking you and not anything else. And we thank you 
that you know our needs before we even utter them in our lips. And we thank you that you are merciful and kind to respond. So as we go now into our, uh, into our life groups, we want to go with your incredible and wonderful presence and peace. And I pray this in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
perfect peace. 